This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to make your own relaxed Roman shade. Relaxed Roman shades are functional with its signature curve which gives your window a soft, casual look. This relaxed Roman shade features a smooth front that is tailored to fall into a gentle curve with built-in fullness along the bottom of the shade. This results in a look that is less structured and more free-flowing. While this relaxed Roman shade is designed to be functional, it is primarily decorative, as folds sometimes require restyling after raising. Let's get started and show you how to make your own. Cindy's going to walk us through the process. Our shade is going to be inside mounted inside the window frame. Um, it is possible to do this in outside mount it. You would just mount it up above the trim and measure from whatever start point you want to where you want it to end down at the windowsill. Take a width measurement and a length measurement. For our shade, it will fit inside the frame of this window. For an outside mount, not shown here, the width is really dependent only on the preference and mounting limitations. With your measurements in hand, go to www.sayright.com. Scroll to the bottom of the website to where it says Fabric Calculator and click on that. Then scroll down to Window Treatments and click on that. This calculator takes all the guesswork out of making your calculations for your relaxed Roman shade. It will also provide a detailed materials list so you know what to order from Sayrite to complete your shade. Um, we've measured our window and it measures 33 and 3 quarter inches wide by 45 inches long. So we've subtracted a quarter of an inch each side for our width and put in the calculator 33 and a quarter, put in our 45 inches, we'll be making one shade, and our fabric is 54 inches wide. Um, the swag depth, the extra that remains at the bottom for the relaxed part of the shade, we want to be 25%. After you put your dimensions in the fabric calculator, if you scroll down, you'll get dimensions, and then you'll end up with a list of materials. This will tell you um, everything that you need to buy to construct this shade in the size that you need. Visit the Sayrite website and pick your favorite decorative fabric. We recommend using our guided navigation and clicking Fabric, Decor and Upholstery Fabric, and then Window Treatments. Any of these gorgeous fabrics will work for this type of shade application. When we scroll up from the list of materials, we can see on the key dimensions that we need to cut our blank 41 and a half inches wide and 67 and 3 quarter inches long. The Sayrite Fabric Calculator makes your shade calculations for you and gives you a list of required materials for your specific shade size. With that information in hand, we're ready to cut the decorative fabric to size. To begin my relaxed Roman shade, I'm going to straighten up the bottom edge of my fabric and um, this is a woven fabric that has a really nice pattern in it. So I'm going to make sure that my pattern is straight all the way across the bottom and trim all of that off. Okay, to find the center of my fabric, I'm going to fold it in half and put a pin here. I'd like to have the pattern centered on the window, so I want this to be the center of my cut piece. And the calculator is asking for 41 and a half cut width. So 20 and 3 quarters is half of that. So I'm going to put a pin out here and put a pin over here at 41 and a half. And that's the cut line for my, the width of my shade. So to make sure I get my line straight, I'm going to measure in from the salvage edge to my pin, which is 7 and a quarter, and put a pin in a couple places up the width, up the length of the fabric, so I have a line for my ruler. A line is struck along the length of the fabric using a straight edge. Now we can cut the fabric to size along this edge and the opposite. Now that our blank is cut to the correct width, we need to concentrate on the okay, flare. The flare at the bottom allows for the relaxed part of the shade, so that has been added into the 41 and a half inches. So we're going to cut our piece 41 and a half inches the full length and then we're going to cut out the angles for the flare. So we'll be measuring up eight and three quarter inches. That piece will remain the full width of 41 and a half. Then from the bottom we're also going to measure up 24 
and three quarter inches. And that's where our angle will start from the eight and three quarters up to the 25, 24 and three quarters. The rest of the shade from that 24 and three quarter inch measurement will remain 36 and a quarter inches wide. When we're done, this is what the flare will look like. It may sound confusing, but we can refer back to the fabric calculator to make it a little bit more clear. And if you scroll down just a little bit farther, you get a panel rendition. And this shows you what your fabric should look like. If this was laying flat on the table as it is here in the picture, the red area is your side hems. The green area is the body of your fabric. And you can see here to here, it starts to angle out and then it's straight the rest of the way down. The purple at the top is your allowance for your top hem. And there's a small line of purple here at the bottom. That's your bottom hem. Okay, um, to create the flare, um, the fullness at the bottom of this relaxed Roman shade, we're gonna leave the full width that we have cut here, eight and three quarter inches up. So I'm gonna mark it with a pin, eight and three quarter inches up. Um, for our shade, that's what the calculator is telling us. Um, when you put your dimensions in, it may be a little bit different. And then 24 and three quarter inches up is where I'm gonna stop the angle. So from this point up, it will be just the hems that we've added. From here to here, we'll have an angle and from here across will be the full width of the fabric. So we've added 2.65 inches or 2 and 5 eighths for hems. So at that point I'm going to put a pin. So I know that from where those two pins intersect to here is where I want my angle to be. Now that those locations are marked on the fabric via straight pins, we can use a straight edge and strike a line. For us, our measurement was 24.75 inches up. From that point on, we'll be cutting off 2.65 inches of fabric, or 2 and 5 eighths. And then from this point up, I'll be cutting off this much fabric. To enable us to strike a line, we'll use straight pins and measure over from the edge of the fabric the appropriate distance for our shade. After placing a few pins, we can use our straight edge and strike a line, then cut off the excess. Now, do we need to repeat these steps for the opposite side of the shade? No. We're going to mark and cut this side off, then fold the shade in half, pin it, and duplicate that on the other side. We'll show you that next. Now I can fold this in half and cut the other side just like I cut that side. The edge to the left is the bottom portion of the shade, and you can see the flare there. I want to make sure that I keep my center lined up with the pattern before I cut. If your decorative fabric does not have a pattern, then you need to take measurements to ensure that it's folded in half perfectly. Before cutting the other side, be sure to pin it securely in place because that edge will become your cut line and you want to make sure it doesn't move around on you when you cut. Here it is cut out. Now we'll remove the pins and unfold the assembly. And here's what your shade should look like. Very similar to this for the bottom flare. Adding a lining is optional, but recommended. We're going to show you how to do that next. Now if you plan to use a lining on your shade, here's the lining directions right here. You're going to cut that piece 41 and a half by 67 and 3 quarters and then you'll use your fabric piece to cut the pattern for your lining after you've cut your angles in your fabric. We've chosen to use a blackout drapery fabric called Rocklawn, available from Sayerite. It's an excellent fabric. We'll need to square up the bottom of the lining so that it is also um, straight on grain so that the shade will hang straight. So I've got these right sides together and I'm going to put a few pins in and then I'm going to cut the lining the same size as my face fabric. Mirror the lining fabric shape and size to the decorative fabric, but without the seam allowance. This is most easily accomplished by cutting an exact duplicate of the decorative fabric, then removing the one and a half inches along the sides of the lining fabric. In length, it should match the length of the decorative fabric exactly. When using a pattern like our decorative fabric to create cut lines, be sure it is pinned and placed securely to the lining fabric before cutting the lining fabric. Now in order to make our hem roll around to the back 
so that the lining is back here and you don't see lining along this part of our blind. I need to cut the lining down an inch and a half on each side. This is easily done with the Sarek canvas patterning ruler. If you don't have this, make marks one and a half inches away from the cut edges, then strike a line. Be sure these marks are perpendicular to the edge when they are placed on the lining fabric. This will be done to both edges of our lining fabric. As discussed earlier, we're using the Rocklon blackout drapery fabric, but Rocklon also has a non-blackout lining fabric that's also great for shade applications. Check it out at sayarite.com. Place the decorative fabric face down over the lining, which is facing up. One edge has been pinned down already. We didn't show that. Cindy will explain. Now we're ready to stitch these two long angled edges together. So I'm going to meet my cut edges and pin them with these bottom edges even, the lining and the face fabric. And you can see that we have extra face fabric. And that's the way that it's supposed to be. The side that was pinned already should be done in the exact same way. Um, the fabric is right sides together, right side of the lining to right side of my decorator fabric. Both vertical edges are pinned together so they match up exactly. These pins hold everything in place so we can sew it. And the calculator calls for a three quarter inch seam along these long edges. The opposite edge was pinned down earlier. Here it is. Notice the edges are matched up perfectly. And there's bulk fabric in the center. That is normal. I'm going to use the magnetic seam guide and line it up with a three quarter inch line on my throat plate and do a straight stitch all the way down this long edge. We will sew this straight stitch along both long sides. We're only going to show one. Using the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide will help to keep our stitch three quarter inch away from the raw edge of the fabric as we sew the decorative fabric to the lining fabric. These stitches will not be visible when the shade is complete. However, we recommend using a thread color that matches the decorative fabric as close as possible. Once this is done, we can remove the pins and repeat the process for the other side of the shade. We're not going to show all of this. Before I turn this right side out, I'm going to make a clip where this angle happens on the seam, and I'm going to make a little bit of a a notch here to allow this to uh, fold around properly also when I turn it. And the same thing on the other side. Turn the shade assembly right side out. Now I'm going to press the edges so that I have three quarters of an inch of the face fabric showing here and over here with the lining to the back. And I want the lining seam to go towards the center of the blind. It'll help to reduce the bulk on this outside edge. We'll use an iron and create the crease here along this long edge and the opposite long edge. We will not show that. This will be done to both long edges of the shade. Let's move on. Coming up next, we'll work on finishing the bottom edge. The next step is to put in the, the bottom hem and I have allowed, the calculator has allowed three quarters of an inch for the bottom hem. So I'm gonna turn it back out, turn it inside out again so that it's right sides together. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a pin at these folds so that when I have it right sides together, I get these folds in the right spot. And I'm gonna do that on each side. I want to use that pin that I put in there as my fold line on the outside edge and line up my two bottom edges because they were cut together to begin with and I know they were both straight when I started. I'm 
And the same thing on this side, this pin that I put in before I turned it, that's going to be where I fold it. Sew so across the bottom edge with a straight stitch, three quarter inch inside the matched bottom edges. Again, we're using the deluxe magnetic guide here as a fence would be used on a table saw to keep our stitch nice and straight and three quarter of an inch along the bottom edge. If no lining were used, the bottom edge would be finished by folding it over against the back of the shade, three eighths of an inch twice, which would create a double hem. Again, that's only if no lining were used. Take out the pins that you put in the corner so that you can trim this corner off without cutting into your pin. And trim that off so it'll fold nicer when you turn it. Both of the corners will be trimmed like this. This is only done if a lining is used. If no lining were used and a double hem were created, you would skip this step. Okay, I've turned this uh, back right side out and I'm gonna use the sewing gauge. I'm gonna use this end, that little point of the sewing gauge to get these corners out nice and square. She'll use that sewing gauge and go inside of our shade and push the corners out so they're nice and neat. If you don't have this, you could use another blunt object like this. Do this to both the corners. We're only going to show this one. The shade is obviously turned right side out here when we're doing this and also when we're ironing the bottom edge. I want to try and press it so that a little bit of the face fabric is showing on the back and that way my lining won't show on the front when I'm finished. Next up, we need to locate where each ring will be placed on the shade. We'll be using the Sarite fabric calculator to help accomplish this task. For our ring placement, it will be 8 inches, the depth of the segment, 8 inches up, starting at the bottom. And you can see that in the rendition here, that it, the rings are eight inches apart all the way up. If you need more help with that, you can press the documentation button, and that'll give you directions. We're also going to show it, but this will help you if you need more help. So to mark the placement of my rings, I'm going to square the bottom of the shade up with the straight edge of my table. The first one I'd like to have right here at the bottom and one inch in. No matter the size of shade you have, you will always have a ring here at the bottom edge on the right side and this left side as Cindy is marking here. And then from there, my rows are gonna be spaced eight inches apart. Depending on the overall length of your shade, your measurements for the spacing of the rings may be different. Be sure to check the Sarite fabric calculator to confirm your measurement. Now this second row only gets a ring on each end also, and then when it starts to angle is when I'll put in the rows in the middle. So on the second row, I'm also going to mark one inch in and just put a pencil mark where my ruler is at the eight inches. Done on both the left side and the right side, as shown here. Then she'll measure up another eight inches. She'll measure down on the bottom edge of that metal ruler because that's where she placed her last marks. She places pins and then she'll move the metal ruler up to those pins. If you want to check and make sure that you're staying straight across your shade, you can measure down to the straight edge of your table again and make sure that your ruler is still straight. So here again I'm going to measure in one inch where it meets the ruler. For our shade, the dimensions of our shade, it shows rings on each side, one, two, three, four rows up, and then on the fourth row is when we put the, the rings, the two rows in the middle. Um, when we get to row four, we're going to do the two rings on the outside an inch in from the edge, and then the two in the middle, which are considered lift lines, will be ten and a half inches apart. Ten and a half inches from the one inch mark, I'm going to make another mark here, 
and over here. And this will begin the row of rings that pulls the blind up and down in the center. Just keep repeating that process until you've accounted for all rings that is shown in the panel rendition on the Sarai fabric calculator. With our straight edge placed along the appropriate spot, she confirms that it's still straight by measuring all the way to the bottom of the shade on both the left side and the right side. If the shade is more than 20 inches wide, there will be one or more lift line rings in the center from where the flare begins to the top of the shade. This will be indicated on the panel rendition in the Sayerite fabric calculator. We'll continue that process until all of the rows of rings are complete for the shade. Our pattern here, uh, rendition, calls for five rows of rings above the angle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and I've got one, two, three, four, five. And before I move my fabric, I'm going to put a pin where each one of the pencil marks is. This will help me see where my rings need to go and keep everything uh, held together before I stitch the rings in. Pinning both the decorative fabric and the lining fabric together at each ring location may not seem important, but it's very important, so please do this. Also, the bottom edge where the hem was placed is also pinned very securely, as shown here in the video. Using a zigzag sewing machine, we can secure the rings. We need to set it in a neutral stitch length. I'm ready to put the rings on my uh, relaxed Roman shade. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my thread tails are long. So I'm gonna pull those out a little bit. We'll be using those tails to create a knot. So I'm ready to start sewing uh, my rings on. I can take the pins out and I'm gonna lay the circle of the ring right on the pencil dot that I made and then center that under my foot and put the foot down right on top of the ring. I have the machine set at a zigzag with um, no length to it so it's going to tack right in place. And if you want to test it first you can put the needle down in with the hand wheel and make sure it's not going to hit your ring. And I'm going to go back and forth with a zigzag in place about six times. Don't have a zigzag machine? A little bit later we'll show you how to do it with a hand needle. Now you can see I have two tails on the front, on the back and two tails on the front. So I'm going to take the two strings on the back and just tug on them a little bit and the front string will come around to the back and see how it makes a loop right there. Then I can pull that to the back and I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Just tug on it a little bit and you get a loop of the front thread in the back. Get a hold of that with a pin and pull it to the back. Now I have all my threads on the back side to tie and a nice clean finish on the front. Using the four legs of line, Cindy will tie a few knots here to secure this ring in place. Two double knots and a third. And I'm going to tie these three times and then snip them. Pins should be removed only one at a time as each ring is sewn in place. Obviously, you'll want to use a matching thread that will match your decorative fabric so the threads are almost invisible. That's very important. Now, the best way to do this if you have a zigzag sewing machine is to pull the pin, sew a ring in place, lift your presser foot, then do not cut your trailing threads. Move the fabric to the next pin location, leaving the tails in place. Now you can sew the next ring in place and the thread tails are left long. They are not cut, so they attach one ring to the adjacent ring. Then when you're done installing all of the rings, you can take the shade to a table and cut the tails, leaving them long obviously so a knot can be tied, all in one step. This is a quick way to get it done. Here you can see all those threads attached to each ring. She will cut them so that they are long and then she'll tie knots as she did previously. If you don't have a machine that will do a bar tack like that, these can all be hand sewn on also. Um, you do want to go through the front of the blind 
because this is what holds the lining to the uh, face fabric. We did not show it, but a knot was tied at the end of the line before she started hand sewing. So I'm just going to put the ring in the, in the loop of thread and keep going around about six, seven times maybe. We're going to show this in double time. Then on my last, when I get to the end, I like to loop it through the thread that's there instead of making a knot. And then end my thread out away from my ring and trim it off. All of our rings are now installed and all the pins are removed except for the pins at the bottom of the shade. We'll remove those next. At the top we have extra fabric for a fudge factor. We also need to finish it off. To finish off the top hem of our uh, shade, we want this last segment to be equal with the other segments. So I'm going to measure up 9 inches, 8 inches for this segment, and 1 inch for my hem, and put a pin. And then I want to measure all the way down to the bottom. And that is 65 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to put a couple more pins at 65 and 3 eighths across the shade and then trim off my extra. Pins have been placed and a line struck down, then we'll cut off the excess. Now we just need to finish the top edge. Cindy will explain. And I'm going to pr press a one inch hem in the lining and the face fabric and fold it together like this and then I'll stitch my velcro on. To crease the decorative fabric and also the lining fabric, she'll use an iron, measuring one inch and folding to the inside of the shade. The lining fabric is also folded to the inside of the shade, and we like to leave a little bit of the decorative fabric sticking out uh, along the top edge, with the decorative fabric just slightly back from that. I'm going to apply the seam stick kind of in the middle of my one inch because I'll be stitching on either side of that to do the Velcro and my next step. But this will hold things together a little bit for me while I'm putting the Velcro on. Peel back the transfer paper and that reveals the glue. Now it can be basted in place to help hold it as we sew it. I'm ready to apply my uh, Velcro to the top of my shade and I'm going to put the soft side on the shade. And I'm also going to use the seam stick on this down the center of it. If you don't have seam stick, obviously you could pin the top of the shade together and you could pin the Velcro in place as you take it to the sewing machine and sew it. We'll sew a straight stitch reversing at the beginning and also at the end, along the top long edge and the bottom long edge. Next up, we'll install the bottom rod. It does two things for our shade. It helps keep the flare full width, and it also adds weight so the shade will operate better. We're ready to cut the weight rod for the bottom of our blind and the directions on the app tell us to cut it at 32 and a quarter inches. The bottom rod for fabric shades should be cut one inch shorter than the finished shade width. This is without the flare. We're going to use the tubular webbing to enclose the weight bar. So I want the webbing to be the exact size of the flared part of the uh, shade. First cut the webbing with so I'm scissors, trim that off. then insert the weight rod inside the tubular webbing. After that, use a hot knife to keep the ends of the webbing from unraveling. And I want the rod to be centered on the blind so I can feel that 
the rod is right here. I'm about two and three quarters on this side and two and three quarters on this side. Needs to hang in the center of the window. So I'm going to take it over to the machine and stitch a line on each side of this so that the rod does stay in the center. She'll pin it in place so it doesn't move when she takes it over to the sewing machine to sew the rod so that it's centered in the webbing length. The ends of our webbing have not yet been heat sealed. We'll do that after this step. After the weight rod's been sewn into the center of the tubular webbing, we can now use the hot knife to seal the ends of the webbing to keep them from unraveling. If you don't have a hot knife like this, you can use a flame to slightly melt the ends. Be careful. Okay, now I wanna um, pin this in place right below this ring, right underneath my stitching. And then I'm going to go over to the machine and stitch it. Um, across here. This bottom rod for fabric shades will always be mounted beneath the second row of rings as shown here. When sewing the end of the webbing to the shade on the underside obviously, do some reversing at least three times on each side. Getting closer to being done. Now we'll concentrate on feeding the lift lines. We're ready to uh, run the line through the shade and I'm gonna start at the fourth ring up from the bottom and go towards the bottom. We're using a Dacron leech line that's 564 inch in diameter. And I'm gonna put an adjuster down here at the bottom. Instead of tying a knot, we install a cord adjuster orb. This allows us to make modifications when the shade's done. And I want my strain to come down all the way to the top of the shade and down beyond the first ring. And then I need another adjuster at this point at right above the fourth ring. So after I put those two adjusters on, I can string this string um, this blind is going to draw on the right, so this right string only needs to be that long. The one on the other side has to go all the way up across the top and then down to here, so it'll be a little bit longer. So on this side, I'm also going to start the fourth ring up and put an adjuster on here. Need to know how much line is required for your shade? Check out the Sayrite Fabric Calculator. It gives you a total. Take it all the way up to the top, across the top, and down about halfway in between the first two rings and cut it. And then I can add the adjuster right above the fourth ring. and then string all the way up to the top with this one also. And for the two rows of rings in the center, I want an adjuster here at the bottom, but I'd also like to leave about 12 inches of line. This 12 or so inches of line that is left extra underneath the orb will be used for final adjustment of the shade when it's done. This one goes all the way up to the top, across the top, and down between the first and second ring. And the last one is also a center one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave about 12 inches beyond the adjuster. And it goes up to the top and across and also down to between the first and second ring. Your shade may have more or less center rings. You need to do this for all of the center rings. 
Next up, we need to make a headboard. The headboard is approximately a one inch by two inch board and the length is the size of the finished shade. Okay, we're ready to cover the board that we're gonna attach the Velcro to and then attach the blind to. And we have a scrap of fabric from the side of our shade. So I'm gonna use this uh, face fabric on this. You can use lining if you want to. Um, this works also. We're using the EZE TC08 Long Nose Staple Gun. This is a pneumatic staple gun that works excellent. It's available from Sayerite. But you could also use just a heavy duty arrow hand stapler if you like. Instead of covering with fabric, the board can also be painted. When we get to the ends, we'll just wrap it up like we do a present. We will have to cut out some of the excess fabric here. We'll show this in double time. Along the side where we folded and stapled the decorative fabric in place, we will now install our hook velcro in place along the top edge and we'll place staples approximately three to four inches apart stapling that velcro in place okay we're ready to we've got the velcro on the board we're ready to um, mark where the screw eyes go on the board for the strings to come up so i'm going to lay the board right on the blind and adhere the velcro these screw eyes are going to be attached to the bottom of the headboard. It's been rolled on its side. We didn't show that. And now we're pre-drilling holes so that they are directly in line with the rings and the line coming up to the headboard. Now screw eyes can be inserted in the pre-drilled holes and screwed into place. Here in this image you can see how the shade is attached to the velcro to the headboard and the eyes are attached to the bottom of the headboard. When the headboard is turned the eyes will be facing down towards the bottom of the shade. Now feed the 532nd inch leech line through the screw eyes that were installed on the headboard as shown here. We did not mention earlier what should be done if you want to draw up your shade on the left side instead of the right side. All you need to do is reverse the sequence of lines so they all go towards the other side of the headboard or what is sometimes referred to as headrail. With the lines installed this way, when the shade is turned around so the right side is facing out, the lift lines will draw up on the right side. Rotate the headboard around so the screw eyes are parallel with the shade as shown. Okay, now we're gonna adjust this bottom part of the shade. This is what's gonna form the swag when it's in the window. So I'm gonna use the adjuster to just pull this up together. And I wanna pull it all the way up tight so that both of the adjusters are together and all of the rings land right next to each other. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Only do this on the left side and the right side. So you can see all of this extra fabric right here is what's going to make the swag when it goes in the window. Now pull the lines so they are snug but the shade is still laying flat. I have all the strings pulled snug from where their bottom point will be and the shade is laid out flat. So I'm going to take all four cords and cut them at the first ring. Depending on the size of your shade, you may have more or less cords. Then I'm gonna use the cord condenser to turn them all into one cord. There we go. Once the cords are inserted in the larger top bell portion of the condenser, tie a knot. Trim off the tails so they are flush with the bottom of the cord condenser bell. 
Directly under this will be a single line. Take some of your excess line to do this. Now the other half of the condenser will be only carry one cord. And because I'm only putting one in there, there's a little washer that comes with this. They can drop in there and make that hole just a little bit smaller. A knot or two is tied to the end of this single line. Excess trimmed off and then its smaller bell is pushed up so the knot is buried inside of it. Then the larger and smaller bell are screwed together. Now I'm going to make the string for the tassel almost as long as my finished length of my blind and apply the wooden tassel to the end of it and another knot here to hold it in place. Some customers prefer this single line to be longer than the shade by a foot or two. You can make that determination and make adjustments as needed. Installing and then dressing the shade is a very important step. That's next. I'm ready to drill the holes to apply this to the window. So I'm gonna um, put a board underneath so I don't drill into our table. Keep the strings out of the way. And notice that she's drilling through the surface where the screw eyes have been attached. She's drilling all the way through the board. Be careful that the fabric does not unravel when the drill bit enters the fabric. For our application, we're going to be screwing it into wood. So we're just using a wood screw here and securing it in place by going halfway through the headboard. We'll stop there and then when we take it to the window, we'll screw it all the way through. Okay, with the Velcro that we put on here, we can open this up to install the headrails to our window frame. This is one of many good reasons to use Velcro against the headrail. Pulling back the shade fabric from the headboard, or headrail as Cindy calls it, gives us easy access to secure it to the window. Now all we have to do is feed the shade fabric back up and attach it to the Velcro so it's nice and straight. We can make adjustments if necessary. Now the important step of dressing. Um, you can see that our weight rod is outside the, in, the um, blind right here. We want that to be tucked inside when it's hanging in the window. And you can see we still have a little bit of adjustment on these two in case we need to change that. This part down here is gonna stay swagged all the time. And you will have to um, adjust your swags and kind of dress it and leave it up in the up position for a couple of days so that it can kind of learn how to hang properly. I'm ready to pull up the uh, shade and start adjusting it. And you can see when I pull it up the first time without adjusting my two center rows, what happens? I get a swag down here and I get straight folds here. Um, I would like it to swag all the way up um, this is a personal preference, but our point was to make a swagged shade. So that's why we left those adjustments in there. So what I'm going to do is let it all the way back down. And on the back side on these two where I have the adjusters, I can reach up under there and adjust that. And I'm going to take it all the way down to the bar, both of them. and make sure that my strings are even here. So I'm gonna just make that snug. And that's moved my adjuster, so I'm gonna pull the adjusters down a little bit farther, back to the bar. This is part of the dressing or styling of the shade that's required. We'll also have to style or dress the pleats. And once that's done and we're happy, we'll leave it up for a couple of days to set it all in place. Now you can see the difference in the folds where this takes a nice soft fold and swags like the bottom of the shade. This treatment takes some training, so you need to put it up where you would like it to be and leave it there for a couple of days. Okay. 
If I pull this up a little bit higher, it kind of bunches out from the top of the window. So I didn't really like the way that looks. I'm going to lower this and that's going to be our maximum height for this window in this shade. So the next thing I need to do is mark where I want my cord cleat to be. And I want to mark the spot for that about an inch above my condenser. Where you locate the cleat is totally dependent on your preference. I'm going to put my cord cleat right in the center of my mark, the center of the cord cleat right on my mark, and mark my screw holes with the pencil. Why did we position the cord cleat here? Because you can just simply take the line with the cord condenser and just tuck it underneath the cleat, and there you go. However, the appropriate way to use this cleat is to do as Cindy is doing here. Relaxed Roman shades are functional, but they are usually not made for everyday use. In other words, drawing up and down on a daily basis. However, the design of this relaxed Roman shade makes common use a little more practical and possible. After styling and dressing the shade to your desired look, let it rest in the up position for a few days. After that, it will be trained and will draw up and down smoothly with pleats falling into the correct position. Here you can see Cindy drawing the shade up and she is smoothing out all of the pleats as she goes. She is now in the top position and will cinch the line. She'll make her final adjustments to all the pleats and then let it rest in this position for a few days. If you take your hands and work with these folds, you can um, get them kind of in place and this is where you want to leave it for a couple of days. After styling and dressing and being left for about 72 hours in the up position, here is how the relaxed Roman shade performs when it's drawn up. Coming up next is the materials lists and the tools that we used to build this relaxed Roman shade. For a list of the materials and the quantities required for your size shade, be sure to check out the Sayerite Fabric Calculator. You'll find thousands of great decorative fabrics that will work well for window shades like this. Check them out at Sayerite today. To see more free tutorial videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.